You are listening to the New Book of Daniel podcast. Hello and welcome to the New Book of Daniel podcast. My name is Daniel Bobinski. I'll be your host on this adventure. And on today's news update, uh, Friday, uh, November 6th, the year 2020, I want to talk a little bit about what's happening on the national stage with Joe Biden and this election, which is obviously uh, to anybody with... Uh, a level-headed brain can see it's just fraught with fraud. Even the liberals out there can see the fraud that's happening. Uh, But you have the people pushing on. You've got Nancy Pelosi, you've got the media, they're not even letting Trump, uh, they're not even airing Trump's speeches. They're cutting him off, saying that he's lying, and they're really doing their best, their damnedest, to gaslight the entire world into believing that Joe Biden won this election. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that the election, the votes have been uh, manufactured. Uh, You just, statistically, this kind of stuff just doesn't happen. And I was um, very intrigued this morning when I received a tweet from a friend of mine, or a, a message from a friend of mine, who said, let's consider the book of Esther. And I, just my eyes like, oh, yes, no wonder. Because I'm a firm believer, firm believer that this, this election goes to Trump, that the, that the fraud from the Democrats is going to be discovered and Trump will serve a second term. I predicted that uh, in my column back in September, and I am not changing my position on this. I don't care what Joe Biden does tonight. I don't care if he gets up and asserts his authority as he's promised he's going to do. This is all part of an orchestrated plan. But I want to review with you quickly a little history from the book of Esther. And if you're a reader of the Bible, then you've probably read this story before. And if not, well, maybe you've heard it before. But it, let me set the stage, okay? In ancient Israel, uh, the Jews had been taken captive by the Babylonians. And uh, they've carted off into Babylon. And as things go over time, uh, eventually the Babylonians were taken over by the Medes and the Persians. And so uh, they're now in charge, and the Jews are still in the land. And there's one guy in the uh, Persian Empire there who didn't like the Jews. The guy's name was Haman. And he managed to get an ear of the king, and the king makes him second in command in all of the kingdom. And the king lets him make a decree that all the Jews should be killed on a certain date. Not good for the Jews, right? Well, Haman also had a particular distaste for one specific Jew named Mordecai. And Haman and his buddies decided that they're going to build this big pole. I mean, Mordecai is like the arch enemy now of Haman because he will not bow down to Haman. And so they build this 75 foot tall pole and they scheme that they're going to uh, kidnap Mordecai and impale him at the top of this huge pole. Let's make a big statement to the whole community, don't mess with Haman. We're gonna, we'll, we'll put even Mordecai, we'll impale him on this pole. So it's not looking good. But the night before that Haman is gonna grab Mordecai, the king has a tough time sleeping and he asks somebody to bring him his diary so he can just go through his diary. And he's reading that a couple of years ago that Mordecai had uncovered a plot to kill the king and saved the king's life. And that the king had never done anything. He realized he'd never done anything to honor Mordecai. So in the morning, he summons Haman before Haman can kidnap Mordecai. And he has Haman brought to the the king's residence. And uh, he says, what should the king do to honor somebody that he wants to honor? And Haman's so full of himself, he's thinking, well, um, let's see, what what do I want the king to do to honor me. And so he says, well, we should put him in a robe that the king's wore and let him ride on one of the king's horses and put a crown on his head and have somebody walk him around town saying, this is what is done for the man who who the king wants to honor. And the king says to Haman, hey, great idea. Excellent. Do that for Mordecai. (laughs) so, So Haman has to do this for Mordecai and he takes him all over town and you can just imagine he's just gritting his teeth while he's doing it. But he does it. And then he goes back to his house and he's all distraught because he realizes that Mordecai has the favor of the king. And about that time, the king's guards come and they get Haman and they bring him back to the king's place because there's supposed to be a feast put on by the king's wife, Queen Esther. But you know what? The king does not know that 
the king's wife, Esther, is a Jew. And so here she's putting on this feast, and she's already said she has a request. And the king says, well, so what's your request? And she exposes the plot about Haman uh, making the order to kill all the Jews. And she then reveals that she herself is a Jew. And the king is furious. And he leaves the room. And when he comes back in, Haman is over by Esther's um, Che's recliner, and he's begging for his life. But from the king's vantage point, it looks like he's making the moves on Esther. And so this really sends the king into a tizzy. And then the, someone tells the king about the pole that Haman had established, built uh, the night before to uh, impale Mordecai. And the king says, put Haman up there. So Haman gets placed on top of a 75-foot pole and impaled. And then the king gives Mordecai all of Haman's possessions. And oh, there's more to the story, but basically uh, Mordecai gets placed second in command in the entire kingdom. <sighs> you know what? This totally parallels what's going on. I, this, I have total peace about what we're seeing in our nation today. Well, all this plan with the voter fraud is a, is a big plan and it parallels the plan of, of Haman to get rid of the Jews. I have confidence that the Democrats' plan is going to be exposed, that they're going to be the ones that get punished instead of the Republicans. It is not going to go well for the Democrats. But I do have to say this, um, before Esther exposed, uh, uh, she exposed that plot, she asked all the Jews to fast and pray for three days. And she herself fasted and prayed for three days. And she did that before she approached the king. So if you're a believer, if you consider yourself to be an ambassador for God, um, I have a request for you. And if you're not, you know what? If you don't consider yourself to be a, a follower of the, of the God of the Bible, then this doesn't apply to you. But if it does, I'd ask you to consider um, 2 Chronicles 7.14, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. And you know, we hear that verse a lot, but I think a lot of folks forget uh, the verse right before it, 2 Chronicles 7, 13, when uh, God's talking about when you should do that. He says, when I shut up the heavens so that there's no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague upon my people, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. So I just want to call out that if you're a follower of the Bible, we, now is the time to do that. Now is the time to humble yourself. Yep, we are just little specks in the universe, folks. And pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. Let's stop pointing pick our, our, our fingers at everybody else and just say, you know what, God, forgive us for all this stuff. This is, this is the scripture. And everybody thinks that, you know, the whole bunch of Bible thumpers out there, hey, you know what, folks? It's not going to hurt, and it just may very well help. Now, this is Daniel Bobinski with the news update for the 6th of November, 2020. You're listening to the New Book of Daniel podcast. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll catch you on the next show. Until next time, be blessed. Music